Welcome back to our second part on the surprising path to prosperity that led the United States to becoming a global economic powerhouse. In this part, we'll take a look at the factors that drove the U.S. economy to even greater heights in the 20th century. We'll discuss the role of innovation, the rise of the consumer economy, and the impact of globalization. We'll also explore some of the challenges that the U.S. economy faces today. And we'll ask the question, can the U.S. continue to be a global economic powerhouse in the 21st century? The 1970s were a decade of economic turmoil in the United States. The Vietnam War dragged on, President Nixon resigned amidst impeachment charges, and some Americans were held captive in Tehran. Cheap imports flooded the market, and it felt like the country was on a sinking ship. This economic crisis was given a new name, stagflation. Stagflation is a combination of high inflation and economic stagnation. It was a tough spot to be in, like being stuck in a revolving door. Then came President Jimmy Carter. He tried to fight the economic weakness with more government spending and wage and price guidelines. But it was like trying to swat a fly with a toothpick. He did manage to deregulate some industries, like airlines and trucking, which may have helped tame the inflation beast a bit. The game changer, though, was the Federal Reserve tightening its grip on the money supply in 1979. They hiked up interest rates, which is kind of like taking away the punch bowl just as the party gets going. The result? Less spending, less borrowing, and one heck of an economic hangover. In 1982, the U.S. economy was as cheerful as a wet cat, going through a tough recession. Businesses went belly up, farmers were hit hard, and it felt like the whole nation had the economic blues. But as they say, tough times don't last. Tough nations do. By 1983, the economy had bounced back, and inflation had become as tame as a well-trained dog. For the rest of the 80s and into the 90s, inflation was usually under 5%, much like a well-behaved kid in class. Despite all the bumps in the road, the economy did get a jump start in the 1980s. However, farmers still had it rough, especially with the droughts and floods. Savings and loan organizations went a bit too crazy with lending, leading to a mess the government had to clean up. The decade also saw growing trade deficits, a worrying trend like noticing your favorite jeans getting a bit too tight. The 1980s saw the collapse of the Soviet Union and Eastern European communist regimes under Reagan and its successor George Bush. However, the economic woes of the 1970s hadn't completely disappeared, like an annoying party guest who just wouldn't leave. And while all this was happening, Asian economies, especially Japan, started to look like they might take over the economic superstar role. The 80s also gave us corporate raiders, the economic version of pirates. They buy companies with low stock prices, break them up like a kid's Lego set, and then sell off the pieces. This caused a big ruckus with some folks complaining about the chaos in job losses, while others argued that the Raiders were actually helping by putting money into more successful ventures. It was a bit like arguing over whether it's better to have a pet dog or a pet cat. Either way, the 80s definitely gave us a wild economic ride. Enter Bill Clinton, stage left, who served as a president from 1993 to 2000. He was a moderate Democrat with a knack for staying in the middle of the road. Clinton reigned the death knell for the era of big government, especially after failing to pass his ambitious health insurance plan. He even shook hands with Republicans on cutting welfare spending, surprising everyone like a cat playing fetch. However, even with fewer people on the federal payroll, Uncle Sam still had a big say in the economy. Now, the 90s weren't just about grunge music and friends. The economy got its groove back and started to resemble a speedboat more than a sluggish steamboat. The fall of the Soviet Union and Eastern European communism was like starting a gun for business opportunities. With advancements in technology, we had more cool gadgets than Batman's utility belt, creating a booming computer hardware and software industry. The economy bloomed like a cherry tree in spring, and so did business profits. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, once as sluggish as a tired tortoise, sprinted to over 11,000 in 1999. This wealth wave lifted many boats, but left some docked at the shore. Following a lengthy economic winter, the American way of doing things started to look like the cool kid in the economic classroom. Less planning, more flexibility, and heated competition were seen as the winning formula for the global economic race. Japan's model, once idolized like a pop star, is now less appealing. The 1990s also reshuffled the American workforce like a deck of cards. Farm jobs continued to shrink, and manufacturing became the kid picked last in the dodgeball game. Service jobs mushroomed, making cashiers and financial advisors more common than manufacturing workers. In a dramatic plot twist, Computers and software replaced steel and footwear as America's industrial superheroes. Surprisingly, the federal budget slimmed down, 
like someone sticking to a New Year's resolution. Although the government ended up with a big IOU from all the Social Security promised to baby boomers, it managed to scrape together a surplus in 1998 for the first time in 30 years. The economic boom prompted debates on whether the US had entered a new economy. Moreover, America's economy was now tangled up in the international market like a bowl of spaghetti. Trade barriers were kicked to the curb, and North America became one big economic family under the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. The US shipped its products to booming Asian and European markets, like Santa delivering Christmas presents. Global financial markets were tied together with invisible digital threads, a thought that would have seemed as far-fetched as a flying car a decade ago. However, all this closeness led to some bumps in the road. High-tech workers thrived, while traditional manufacturing workers took a hit from cheaper labor overseas. Then, when the Asian tigers lost their roar in the 1990s, the economic shockwaves were felt worldwide. U.S. policymakers had to consider the world economy as one big weather system influencing local forecasts. But as the 1990s rolled to a close, Americans dusted off their shoulders and celebrated. The longest economic growth in peacetime history and a record low unemployment rate left Americans grinning like Cheshire cats. With low inflation and the 20th century challenges behind it, America was looking as fit and ready for the future as a marathon runner at the starting line. Now, the United States, wielding its economic prowess like a maestro with a baton, has been composing the symphony of global history for decades. Its role in the worldwide economy is not just a verse or two, but a reoccurring melody that shapes the entire composition. To truly understand the intricate dance of global markets and the powerful role the US plays as the leader, it's essential to delve into the roots of its matchless stature on the international stage. GDP, or gross domestic product, is like the scoreboard for economic might. The US runs up the score, outpacing other major economies like a sprinter in a toddler's race. This wealth underpins US leadership in trade and investment like a financial king on his golden throne. Next up, the US boasts the world's largest retail market. American consumers have pockets deeper than the Mariana Trench. This market, which imports like crazy from around the globe, fuels worldwide economic growth. For US businesses, this vast consumer base is the perfect launchpad, reinforcing Uncle Sam's status as the economic superman. Innovation and technology are America's secret sauce. Companies like Apple, Google, and Amazon have given the US economy a makeover that would make any reality TV jealous. Entrepreneurship and cutting-edge research thrive in tech meccas like Silicon Valley, spark national growth, and set the rhythm for the global tech dance-off. The US economy isn't a one-trick pony, though. It's more like a versatile circus, boasting varied sectors like manufacturing, farming, services, and banking. These sectors are like tightly interwoven threads in the American economic fabric, ensuring the stars and stripes continue to wave high in the global economic sky. Last but definitely not least, an economy's prowess hinges on its educated and skilled workforce. And the US is no exception. It's a bit like Hogwarts, but for all things academic and scientific. This cauldron of skilled labor is the magic potion, driving the growth and dominance of US sectors. But there are some challenges too. The United States is still the world's largest economy, but it faces increasing competition from emerging countries like China and India. These countries are modernizing and expanding their economies at a rapid pace, and they're becoming major players in the global economy. The United States must adapt to these changes if it wants to maintain its economic dominance. In addition to international competition, the United States also faces domestic challenges that could threaten its economic well-being. These challenges include income inequality and wealth disparities, which could lead to social and economic unrest. The uncertainty surrounding the future of essential programs like Social Security and healthcare could also have a negative impact on the country's long-term economic outlook. The United States is at a crossroads. Either it can adapt to the changing global economic landscape and address its domestic challenges, or it can risk losing its economic dominance. The future of the American economy depends on the choices that are made today. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for anything about the global economy.